Hey everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michael. Today we have Tamara from Moogly with us ready for another exciting class. We'll be crocheting a finger crochet blanket. My name is Patricia from Your Inspirations and I'll be answering questions in the chat box. So make sure you drop them there, uh, the questions as they come along. And welcome Tamara. All right, well, thank you so much for having me. I am Tamara Kelly from Moogly, and I'm here today with your inspirations and Michaels to teach you how to finger crochet. So here I have a small blanket that I have made with finger crochet. You can see right here, it is a big, chunky, chunky blanket, very thick, very cozy, very warm. And to get that look and to do the finger crochet, we need a big, thick yarn. So we're using Bernat Blanket Big. You can see right here, this one is available exclusively at Michael's and it is just the thickest yarn. You can see compared to my hand here, how much thicker this is than most yarns you're probably familiar with. Now, the great thing about finger crochet is you don't need to know how to crochet with a hook to, know, to learn how to finger crochet. I'm gonna take you right from the very beginning. So this class is for everybody. It is also, as they mentioned, being recorded. So if you want to go back and watch the recording later, as you progress through those skills, then you can absolutely do that. Cause I wanna make sure we can get all the way through the skills you need to make this blanket today. So with that said, here again is one more look at that blanket here from the front. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in my hand camera here. And then we can gotta hit my little got it on that. And then we can take a closer look here. So here again is that yarn. It's Bernat Blanket Big is the one you wanna look for. If you were not able to get this yarn for this class today, please use whatever you happen to have on hand. Um, the thicker, the better. It will be a little bit easier just because we are using our hands. But um, again, you can use whatever you do have on hand for you today. Um, now here you can see just up close how very thick and fuzzy this yarn is. So this is going to be really easy for us to grip with our hands and it's gonna make a really lovely squishy blanket when we're all done. Excuse me. So let me set that aside and I'm going to bring up the blanket here on camera. I'm gonna make sure it's right side up here. There we are. So this is a close up then of the finished blanket. You can see we've made some stitches here. If you, if you do know how to crochet, you might recognize these are single crochets, but we're going to be using our hands to make those loops. Now, because everybody's hands are different sizes, you may need to adjust how many fingers or how you hold that loop, but you just wanna make sure that it's comfortable for you and your hands and that it creates a fabric that you would enjoy using. So let me go ahead and set that aside and let me pull up the end of my yarn here. So before I get started on the uh, demonstration, are there any questions that I can answer about the yarn or anything right up front? Sharon has a question about how many balls we'll need to make this blanket. If you want to make the size of blanket that I just held up, which was about 36 inches by 36 inches, so a great lap blanket or baby blanket size, although this would be probably more, more appropriate as a play mat than an actual blanket for a baby, uh, it would take about four balls of this yarn. So if you wanted to go bigger than that, it would take more. And we can go over um, how to calculate that a little bit after the actual demonstration of the uh, stitching itself, for sure. I am prepared with paper and pen. <laughs> Was there anything else before we go ahead and get started? I think we're ready to go. Okay, I did see one just pop up. If you don't have big, mm -hmm. thick uh, yarn like this and you want to use several strands of yarn um, held together, then that's an absolutely a great way to do it. So, okay, we've got the end of our yarn. And we want to come in a good, a good way, almost a full foot. When you're using thinner yarns, you usually start about six inches in, but this is a big, thick uh, yarn and we're gonna be making big, big stitches. So we want to come in about a foot or so. Then that's where we're going to make a slip knot. So if you haven't made a slip knot before, I'm gonna demonstrate that for you now. So make sure we get it all on camera here. So I've got the end of my cut end of my yarn here. This end is still attached to the skein. So what I want to do is I want to just flip it over like that to create a loop. There we are. See, we've just made a loop right there. 
make sure everybody has a chance to see that. Then I want to put that tail end underneath the loop. That's the cut end right there. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to reach in into that loop and grab that tail end right there, right in the center of the loop. So once again, we're going to reach in and grab that yarn right there. Then with our other hand, we just want to pull down on those ends and pull up on that loop really gently. You can see how that comes together into a nice little loop right there. Just about big enough for three or so of my fingers to fit in. If yours is really small, if you've pulled it really tight, that is one of the great things. There we are, I'm pulling on the wrong end. Then that is one of the great things about the slip knot. You can pull that end back up and out to make that loop looser. You can adjust it, pulling on that tail end. And then if you don't like it, if it went wonky, go ahead and just pull it on out. Just pull on that tail end. This is a fuzzier yarn, so you have to use a little bit more uh, you know, power than you would with a smoother yarn. You just pull on that end and the knot will disappear. So we can go ahead and do that again here. And grab a little sip of water. Okay, so we are <clears throat> a good foot or so into our yarn here. And I'm going to take the tail end here and attach the skein here and make a big loop. Just fold it over itself just like that. So it looks almost like a little awareness ribbon or something. Okay. So, and if you find that, oh, I've made this loop and it's too close to my end, you just move it into the yarn a little further here. Just make sure you've got it overlapping like that. Then I'm going to slide that tail end right under that loop. There we are. So now we've got that tail end hanging out underneath that loop. So we can reach right into that loop and grab that tail end right there and pull up on it. There we are. And you just have to use your hands to sort of adjust the size of your knot to where you want it to be. There we are. And then you should have a knot at the end that's about big enough for three, maybe four fingers to fit into whatever you're comfortable with. I have a little bit larger hands. I'm a little bit of a larger person. So I like to just use three. Okay, but it shouldn't be super tight. You should be able to wiggle your fingers around in there. So before we move on from the slip knot, are there any other questions I can answer about that? No questions so far. Okay, great. All right, so. When your slip knot is on your hook, uh, well, on your hook, I'm so used to saying on your hook, I'll probably say that a few more times. When your slip knot is made in your yarn, then it is time to get your fingers in there and we're going to start making our chain. I did see a request come through for the knot one more time. So let's do this one more time and then we'll start chaining. We've got our tail end of our yarn. We come in about a foot or so. You know, you don't have to measure it out. Don't get out a ruler, just eyeball it. Make a loop with your yarn. So it's overlapping like that. Pull that tail end behind that loop and then reach in and grab that yarn. You just pull it up until you've got a loop there about the size for three fingers. And you can pull on that tail end and on that loop to adjust the size as needed. You want to make sure that you've got a good long length of tail there so that you can weave in your end when we're all done. So you can tuck this into your blanket um, and it won't come back out on you and you won't have a funny little tail on the end of your blanket. So we have made our slip knot and we have our fingers in the loop there. So now, like I say, we're ready to start chaining. So if you know how to crochet, um, you've probably done this with a hook, but we're gonna do it today with our hands. So what we want to do is take the end of the yarn here that's still attached to my skein, still attached to the ball of yarn, and I'm just going to grab it. You can see how I've grabbed it there with those fingers that are in the loop and pull that loop up and through. And now that makes a new loop that's on my fingers, like so. And I can pull that loop up to be about the size of three fingers or so, okay? So what we've done is we've just made one chain. You can see how it makes sort of a V shape there. That is our very first chain. 
So now for our blanket, we want to make several more. If you wanted to make the size of blanket that I held up earlier, you would make a total of 17 chains. I'm going to keep going here on this one. I'm not going to go quite as big because I want to make it a little smaller so it's easier to see here on camera today. So then to make the next chain, I want to grab this yarn and pull it through. But I want to try and loop it over my hand before I pull it through as we continue here. So loop that yarn over your fingers and pull that loop up and through. By looping it up over your fingers like that, it will help maintain the direction of these chains and it'll just give you a nicer finished edge here. Basically, if you are a crocheter with a hook, then we're mimicking the yarn over that we do when we crochet with a hook. So we pull the yarn up and over the top of our hand and then pull that loop up and through. So, so far, if we look back at what we've done, and pull my hand out here, you can see those V's we're making. We've now made three chains. We can count one, two, and three chains. We don't count that loop that is on our hand, uh, the active loop, if you will, the one that's still in action. That one does not count as a stitch, not in crochet. We just count those. Now, let's say you've made a couple of these. They're a little wonky. You don't like them. Go ahead and just pull back on the end that's still attached to your skein. And those stitches will come right back out so that we can start over again from our slip knot or wherever you wanted to pull it back to. Like if you liked your first couple, but not the last one, you can always just pull out that last one. All right. So now we're back at our slip knot. If you need to adjust the size of your slip knot, you can use that tail end to end pulling back and forth on that loop to get it so that it's a good size for your hand. Then we're going to go ahead. We can go ahead and do that right from the beginning too. It doesn't matter as much I find with the first one, but however you like to do it, grab that yarn and pull it right through that loop right there. All right. So now we've got one chain made again. Then we're going to yarn over, pull that loop up through and pull it up to the size of our fingers again. Let's do that again. Yarn over with that yarn. And you can use your thumb if you need to. You can use the tips of your fingers, whatever makes it easiest for you to really just keep pulling those loops up and through. Now you'll go through the yarn if you're using this big stuff pretty quickly. So I always like to have a little pile of it sort of pulled off the ball off to the side here, but you may need to stop and pull up some more of that yarn and that's fine. You can always put your work down like this. Try and make sure those V's are pointing up at you. And then you can just put your fingers right back in that loop to start crocheting again. There we are. So, so far now we have one. Look at that first V. We've got one, two, three, four chains made. So now that we've made a few chains, let's take a closer look at what those chains look like. We've talked about the top here where it looks like a V if we look at it this way. But when we flip it over to the other side, there are these little humps back here running right through the middle. So we could also count those if we wanted to count our chains this way. One, two, three, four. So those are the backs of those four chains. If we look at them from the side, I would say it kind of looks like a little bit of a Loch, a Loch Ness monster swimming through those little humps on the surface of the water. We've all seen those photos. That's what you're looking for there for those, the back of those chains. Those will come in handy later, but first let's make a couple more chains together. Oh, looks like my video froze there for a minute, but just going to put my hand right back in there. Let's make a couple more chains. We yarn over with that yarn, bring it up over the top of your hand, and then pull that loop through the loop that was on there. And then you've got a new loop. Yarn over with that yarn and pull it up and through. Okay, so now we have those chains. And if it gets a little wonky like this, you can just kind of try and give that a little tug. Sometimes that straightens them out. There we are. And already we are making our first crochet stitch, the chain stitch. So we are off and running. Are there any questions I can answer about these before we move to the next step? 
Andrea had a question about controlling or making tighter her loop. And I also see a similar question from Nina saying her loops keep getting bigger. Okay. Yes, this is something, <clears throat> excuse me. This is something that does take practice, um, just like crocheting with a hook. That's a very typical thing to run into then too. Um, what you want to do is as you pull, let's say we yarn over here and pull that next loop through, we want to try and pull it up big enough for your fingers, but you can pull back on the end that's attached to the skein to make that a little bit tighter. And then when you are pulling that next loop through, say when I'm pulling this yarn through the loop that's on my hand right now, I really want to make sure that I'm not spreading my hand wide open, you know, to grab that yarn. As you can see how that would make that, that stitch then way too big. If that happens, no big deal. We just pull it back out, pull back on that yarn and pull it back down to size. And then get your fingers in there. If it's too big, pull back on it some more, get it the right size. There we are. And then you're ready to start chaining again. Just make sure, like I say, when you grab that yarn that you're not spreading your hand open too much in order to pull that yarn through. But other than that, it genuinely just um, just takes practice like any other skill. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. Doesn't matter how many we have because I am just demonstrating today. Um, but again, if you wanted to make the 36 inch by 36 inch blanket, you would make, want to make a total of 17, um, 17 chains. So, and yes, however you like to hold your yarn um, in order to control attention is great. I love this uh, suggestion Nadine had. She's holding the tail end, which would be back here between her knees, and that helps her control the yarn a little bit as well. So that is another great option. Um, another thing to help you maintain the size of those loops is make sure that the skein um, isn't pulling that you're not you don't have too much tension here that it's not you know falling off a table and creating some weight there um, just make sure that it's nice and easy to get those loops in so what we've made right now are one two three four five six seven eight chains right here so that's a total of eight chains again for the 36 inch blanket you'd want a total of 17 or so it's going to be a little off because again everybody's hand sizes are a little different if we have any, you know, children, preteens in here, your blanket's probably going to be a little bit smaller with the same number of stitches because your hands are smaller. So let's say we've got the number of chains we want, whatever number of chains that is. Now we want to crochet back into these chains to make our first row. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and flip those chains over so we can look at those, that row of back humps again, our little Loch Ness monster humps back here. These are what we're going to crochet under for our first row as we work back into this chain is these back humps back here. Now, if you've crocheted before, you may have been taught to crochet under the top two loops of those chains instead. And that is a valid way to do it. It is certainly a very standard way to do it. But for a blanket like this, we're not going to be coming back and putting a fancy or, uh, border or edging or anything on our blanket. And when we work into these back humps, it's going to give us a really nice finished edge for our blanket. So this is just going to be a better option for this project. So I'm going to turn it around because I'm right handed. So now I'm going to be heading back this way. If you were left handed, you would be heading this way. I want to get my yarn sort of arranged here so I can make sure everything's clear on screen and get my hand back in that loop. Okay. So I've got my hand in that loop the same way I had it from before. So it's still from that V side, but I've now flipped my chain over to the back. And what we want to do is we're not going to work into that chain that's closest to the hook. The last one we made right here, this one we're going to skip. That one's going to be what we call a turning chain. And the turning chain acts as a little ladder on the side of our work that lets our rows be the height they want to be without being all squished down at the ends because they have to jump up. So this one right here is our turning chain or the ladder at the beginning of our row. So that means we're going to come over here to that hump number two, and that's where we're going to be inserting for our first stitch. So keep in mind, this is where we're going. We want to make sure that the loop on our hand 
isn't super big. And in fact, for the turning chains, these ladders, I sometimes will squish it down to just a two finger loop. Because this one, we're not going to work back into this chain at all. It can be a little bit smaller. We just want it to be nice and neat along the side of our blanket. These are all going to line up on the side of our blanket. So we've got our loop on our fingers. Here's that very last chain we made. So we're going to skip over that one for our ladder and come to the next one. What we want to do is we're going to insert our fingers with this loop still on it under that chain, just like this, under that loop. Then we'll grab that yarn and pull it up and through. So I'm going to insert my fingers right into that chain right there. So now I've got that loop that was on there, that loop we made, and I've put my fingers under the loop of that chain. Now I can grab that yarn. And I'm just going to pinch it right between those fingers and pull it up and through. And I will absolutely be repeating this here in just a moment. There we are. So now I want to pull that loop up to be a good size. There you are, Get centered again. It's take your time, make that loop a good size, about three fingers or so. You can see how it's coming up and through that stitch. And then we're going to yarn over just as we did before, but now we're going to pull through both of those loops. There we are. And we pull that loop up to us, our three finger size. And we have made one single crochet. So let's do that again. Again, love the, one of the things that my favorite things about crochet is how easy it is to undo mistakes or undo things you don't like. You just go ahead and pull on that end that's still attached to the skein and all of that will come undone and be right back. Right back to your row of chains. So I'm going to get my fingers back in that loop, not going to open it back up too big. I only want, um, you know, two, maybe three fingers in here. Doesn't have to be very big. I'm going to skip over. This one right here. And then I'm going to come to this one right here. I'm going to put my fingers under that loop of the chain. I've still got that big loop on my hand as well. Now my fingers are under that loop. I'm going to grab that yarn and pull it through just that chain. Just pull that right on up. You can move your fingers, you know, however feels comfortable for you. I always give them a wiggle. <laughs> there we are. So now we've got two loops on our hand, the one we started with and the one we pulled up through that chain. So now we want to take that yarn, do our yarn over our hand and pull that loop through both of those loops. And that right there is how we complete one single crochet. Are there any questions on that first one before I move on down the row here? There aren't any questions about the row. Oh, okay. Kayla just came in saying, please repeat. Okay, let's do an interesting question for you before you move on. Nancy wants to know if you were to do this with a crochet hook, what size would you use? Um, if you wanted to use a crochet hook with this yarn, I would say um, I, uh, an S or a T probably. Um, and I'm well aware that those are really hard to find um, for sure. Those are definitely your much, much bigger hooks. So you'd you just start looking for the greatest, biggest ones you can find on the on the shelf there for sure. Um, so let's go ahead and pull this stitch out one more time and we'll make that first single crochet one more time and then we'll continue on down our row. So let me pull that one back out here. There we go. There we are. So we have our chain here. And we're only going to be using two or three fingers in all of these loops, not our whole hand. This is the back of the chain. This is the top of the chain. On the top, you can see those V's. And on the back, we've got our little Loch Ness pumps there. And those are what we're looking for here as we begin our first row. 
So I'm going to put my fingers back in that loop right there. It's the one our yarn is attached to. You can see our yarn's coming right back out there at the bottom. That's our active loop. This one right here is going to be our little ladder. It's that little piece right in the middle, that middle piece of our chain. This one, sorry, I'm looking at the monitor instead of my fingers and lost my place there. This one is the second one. So we've got our active loop. We're just going to skip this one and go under this one. Now, if you haven't crocheted before and your chains aren't looking exactly like this, but you want to keep going um, and practicing along with me, just find a, you know, find a piece of yarn to go under for right now. Um, it takes practice to be able to read your stitches and kind of see them well. Um, but for now, if you just want to practice the motions, go ahead and go under, you know, whatever loop is uh, pointing up at you right now. Um, if you want to use um, markers like a safety pin or a stitch marker, that's a great idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as you crochet, these are ones that I have that I use quite a bit. These are um, from your inspirations and these are the kind of stitch markers that are typically made for crochet. Um, they do fit maybe around, I think, one strand of this yarn because this yarn is so darn big. Um, but safety pins are a great substitute if you don't have um, these available or a bit of scrap yarn. You can use uh, things like this to help you mark your stitches if that helps you for sure. So, for instance, you could just put them right around your yarn, and then they close up just like a safety pin, and then you can take them back off whenever you're ready. Um, I don't recommend that you pick up uh, knitting stitch markers for this project um, or any crochet project. Knitting stitch markers do not open. They're closed circles. So once you put them on your yarn, it's stuck in your project forever. It works for knitting. It doesn't work for crochet. So, okay, that said, let's go ahead and make that first single crochet again. I'm going to put my fingers back in that loop, two, three, whatever works for you. Skip that one right there. Come to the next one, find that loop right there. And we're going to be going under it away from us. So away from you, go moving forward in that direction. So with that loop already on our hand, we then stick two, three, whatever fits fingers into that chain. You can use your other hand to really squish it right down on there so it's comfortable. We've got our active loop. We've got a bit of that chain right there. And then I'm going to take the end of yarn attached to my, my ball of yarn here. Just pinch it right in those fingers. If you put in your thumb and forefinger, whatever works for you, grab it and just pull it right up through the loop of that chain. Then you can get your fingers in there, get another one in there, get it nice and comfortable, and just keep pulling up. There we are. So you've got those two loops on your, on your hand. Then we yarn over with that yarn and we're going to pull through both of these loops to finish the stitch. There we are and pull that back up to that size. So now there is again our first single crochet and that is what your first one should look like. And I want you to note that now we've got one active loop again. We're back down to one loop and this is the top of that single crochet. It makes another V. That is the top of that stitch. So this would be a good place if you do want to use those stitch markers or if you have safety pins available to go ahead and mark it. I'm not sure if I can get barely get both of these in here. Like I say, this is a unusually large yarn. They aren't uh, usually it's easier, easier to fit them in the stitch marker. But if you like, you can mark those two loops at the top of that stitch and that'll um, make it easier as we continue in future rows for this blanket. So let's move on to stitch number two for our row. I've got the loop back on my hand there. We're back down to one active loop, which does not count as a stitch. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> bumped the camera there, trying to straighten out this big old yarn here. There we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to come back and look at that chain row again and find that next bottom hump there, that next one we want to work through. Again, if you're just learning, if this is the first time you've done it, just try and find a strand there that you can work into for now. Reading your stitches will come with time. I'm going to do the same thing I did before, but this time we don't have to skip anything. We don't need a ladder. 
Our little ladder is right here on the side. We're already up at our height now. So we're ready to go. We're just going to insert our hand right under that loop now, still going away from us, underneath that loop of the chain. So we can grab our yarn, pull it just up through the chain. So now we've got two loops on our hook or on our hand. Told you that was gonna happen. <laughs> there we go. Then we can yarn over again and pull through those two loops. And now we've made two single crochets. There we are. So you can get a little bit of an idea here with this big fuzzy yarn, it's a little harder to see, but you can kind of get an idea of what those single crochets look like. So if we look at the front of them from the, from the front, we've got one, two single crochets made. If we look at them from the top, I can turn it this way and you'll see just how much it looks like our chain. We've got that first one there that I put our stitch markers, a stitch marker around that made a V. And you can see coming out of that now, we've got another V. So that is the top of our second stitch. So let's go ahead and make our third. From here on out, it's gonna be all just like that second one. We don't have to do anything different until we get all the way to the end. We always wanna make sure to adjust the size of our loop if we've taken it off our hands especially or before we start another stitch so that we don't get them, those really big loose loops on there. And then make some space for yourself here and find that next bottom chain there. There we are. And again, if you just want to, uh, if yours is kind of twisted around and if you wanna just keep going, you can grab, grab whatever loop is handy there. Keep that loop there on your hands. Insert just into that chain there. And you can grab that working yarn, the yarn end attached to the skein. Pull it just through that chain loop. So you've got two loops there on your hook. Get them all nice and adjusted again. And then yarn over and pull through both of those loops to finish the stitch. There we are. So now we've got three made. And if we looked at the top, we can see one, two, three of those V's. So let's do another one here. I'm going to stretch out my chain, find that next hump that I wanna work into, insert my fingers right under that little hump there, Yarn over with the yarn, pull it up through that chain. There we are. So now we've got two loops on our hand. And we yarn over and pull through those two loops. And you can see I'm really getting my other hand in there, helping me manipulate the yarn. This is, um, it's big, thick stuff. So you can definitely, you wanna be able to use your hands and you know, go, don't be afraid to just peel them off your hand. Use your other hand, pull things through, however it works best for you. Um, as long as you like the blanket you're getting in the end, it's all good. So there we've got four stitches made so far. Are there any questions I can answer before I continue on with this row? No questions, but if, just a reminder that if you have any questions, drop them in the chat box and we'll ask them. Okay. And it will absolutely, as we've said before, it will be recorded. So you can definitely um, come back and watch again and uh, slow it down and speed it up. That's the great thing about YouTube. You know, you can really follow it along at your own pace. So let's go ahead and finish this row out. It looks like I've got, let's see, three more chains here. So we've got our next loop right there. Put our fingers in, yarn over. Pull that loop up and through. Get them to be a good size there. Yarn over again and pull through those two loops. There we are. You can always just kind of, like I say, manipulate the yarn here and get it to right where you want it. I'm going to continue working my way down. Lay out that chain. Find that very next hump there. Insert in there. I'm going to give that Yarn a little tug. I could feel this one opening up and getting a little too loose for me. So I just give that a quick tug before I yarn over and pull it up through that chain. 
There we are. And then we yarn over and pull through those two loops. There we are. Now I am at the end here of my chain that I've made. So I've got my slip knots on there. This one can get a little crazy looking, but I just want to take the time and find that back hump if I can. Insert my fingers under there, grab the yarn, and pull it up and through. There we are. Then we yarn over and pull through those two loops. And with that, I have finished my first row. So I've worked back into each one of those chains, except for that very first one we skipped. So if you started with, say, five chains, you would end up with four single crochets because we always skip that one that was closest to our hand. If you started with, uh, you want to make that full size blanket or baby size blanket, I should say, uh, you'd start with 17 chains. So you would have 16 single crochets at the end. So it's always that one less because we've used one of them as that ladder. So let's see, this is what it should look like here. We've just worked across. This is what it would look like from the back. So you can get an idea of what those single crochets look like from the back. They are a little different for sure. From the top, move it around here. So there's our stitch marker that we put in to mark that first one. And now you can see there's a V coming down into that one, a V coming down into that one, a V coming down into that one. And each one of these V's is the top of our stitch. There we are. So now we've got these at the top because we've just made these single crochets and that's what's at the top of our single crochet. You can see if we turn it over here is that starting chain at the beginning. But now we've made single crochets. Uh, the first chain that is closest to the slip knot, yes, you do want to go ahead and work into that one. Sometimes these slip knots will move on you and tighten up that last chain. If you can't get into it right now, especially since we're just practicing, not a big deal. You can go ahead and skip that one. Um, but otherwise, you can try and adjust that open a little bit more. But, um, you know, to get back in there if you need to. Um, but with this yarn, it's fuzzy enough. Hopefully it won't have tightened up on you. So let's go ahead and talk about moving on to row two. because so we've got one row made, but we need to keep building up our blanket. What we've established now is the width. We've made the width of our blanket or our you know, chair pad or whatever we're making. Now we just need to add more rows so that we can add length. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our hand back in that loop. There we go. And again, this is going to be a side one. So I like to make it just a little bit tighter here. And what we need is we need to create a ladder for our second row. Remember, we skipped that last chain in order to use it as the ladder for our first row, but we're out of chains now. We need to chain up one chain for our turning chain for that ladder. So we're going to do just yarn over and pull it through just like the chains we were making before. We're just going to go ahead and add one right there. So now we've got a chain there. We've got a loop on our hook and back down here. We've got our first row. So we're going to come back and down and work into these, but first we need to turn our work. So what that means is we are going to literally turn it over and um, think of it as turning the page in a book. If you're right handed, you're going to turn it as in you're moving on in the book. Just like that onto the next page. If you are left handed, then you've been going this way. So you'll want to go ahead and turn it the other way. Like you have to go back and see what happened on the page before. So let's do that again. We have finished our first row. We have our loop. We always have that one loop at the end. We need to make a little ladder, our turning chain. So we yarn over and pull through just for a turning chain. That's just going to be there on the side. And then we need to turn our work so that we can work back the other direction. So we literally just flip it over. There we are. And with that, I'm definitely going to have to pull up some more yarn. I've run out of the yarn I pre-pulled off my ball. Okay, were there any questions I can answer real quick while I pull up some more yarn here? I don't know. I think oh, Patricia sorry, may have. I was oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Sorry. 
Whoops. <laughs> Brooke has a question. She wants to know how you can keep your yarn from twisting. Um, that is, um, to some extent, just the nature of yarn. Um, it's the nature of crochet. It does tend to twist the yarn a little bit as you work. Um, so when it gets when it gets real twisty, when I have, <clears throat> when, excuse me, when my yarn is twisting up on me a lot, I just kind of hold it up and let it untwist. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, in terms of the the yarn in the piece itself getting twisted, sometimes if you give it a little a little tug, a little pull, um, that can help those little bits of yarn straighten out into where they want to be with the stitches. And then again, part of that does is just practice. Part of that just is a matter of taking the time um, and practicing the stitches and and learning how to read your work and learning how to see when you when you go in there what what effect that has on your project and you can kind of see what you're doing and um, how to adjust that as you go. Um, let's see. I will definitely demonstrate how to add a new ball of yarn, but I want to at least get started here on row two because I know we're running out of time far too quickly. So I have chained up. I've made that one chain, which we've already seen. I'm going to turn my work over so I can work back the other direction. So now my tail end is right back here on my right. And what I want to look for is the top of that first stitch. So this right here is the chain I just made. So if we look at it from this side, from the back of the first row, you can see right there is a hole that goes under that, that V that I pointed out at the top. Remember, it makes a V. We want to go under both of those loops of that V. So from the front, you can actually see, there it is, that little hole right there. That's our goal. That's our destination now for row two. So make sure we skip over our little ladder there. Now we're going to put our fingers under those top two loops of that stitch. So we've got the loop that we're working with and the top two loops of that stitch there. And we want to take our yarn and yarn over. Now we're going to pull it underneath these top two loops, pull it up through that stitch. And again, pull it up to the size of your fingers, whether you're using two or three or however many. Yarn over again. Oop, got caught on my yarn here. There we go. Yarn over again and pull through those two loops, just as we did before that single crochet there. So then we've got the first one on our second row. So then we look at the next stitch. We've got one we'll hole here, come over here. See, there's another hole right there. If I pick that up, you can see that goes under those top two loops of that V. So we want to put our fingers right in there. We can yarn over, pull that loop through. Actually, I did that the wrong way. Let me do that again. Yarn over this way, pull that loop up and through. Get our two loops, yarn over and pull through. Exact same thing we were doing before, but instead of going into that chain, now we're going into that hole. So as we continue on down, we'd go into that next stitch right there, that next stitch right there, that next stitch right there. Just keep looking for that little hole right there and make sure you go under both of those top two loops. When you get to the end, then we've got our marked stitch. So it's very easy to see this is the top of our last stitch. Then we would start exactly as we did again for row two and just keep building up until we have the height or length of a blanket or whatever we're making that we want. Now, because we are running out of time and there's a couple other things I want to show you, and because this is being recorded, so you go, can go back and see the stitches, I'm going to go ahead and cut this yarn. I'm going to say this crazy little blanket we've made is all finished. I'm all done with it. I am ready to finish it off. When you are ready to finish off your yarn, you want to go out about another foot. Remember, we want to have those nice long ends. There we are. We'll go ahead and cut it. And then to secure your end, you can simply pull that end right through that very last loop. When you've finished all your stitching, you should be back down to just having that one active loop out there. So you can cut your yarn, grab it, and pull it right on through. Give it a nice little tug there. This fuzzy yarn always takes a little more tugging. There we go. Pull it on through, and that essentially knots it and makes it secure. Then what you can do is you can take that end 
And what we're going to do is essentially weave it back down into our blanket. What does that mean? We're going to take our hands and literally start tucking it back into those stitches a little bit. We want to hide this end back down inside the blanket itself. Now, big thick yarn like this, it's pretty fuzzy, but with use that end could still wander its way out, right? So there's a solution for that for this particular yarn because this yarn is so thick, um, smaller yarns, this isn't as much of an issue. Um, you can sew it down to your blanket. Sew that yarn end down to your blanket after you've got it exactly where you want it. I wouldn't leave all this hanging out. I would you know, trim it off and sew it real close. It's also how you can add another skein. Um, if you are familiar with crocheting, you can just start your next row or stitch with your next skein if you want to. But for this particular yarn, I think it's really nice to actually sew these ends together. So to do that, you will need a couple little extra tools here. I've got some um, all-purpose sewing thread and a sewing needle. You want it to match your yarn or at least as close as you can come. This is just what I happen to have in my drawer. And I've already got my yarn, uh, thread <laughs> pre-strung on my needle. So used to saying yarn, it's gonna be hard to switch here. And you can see I've just sandwiched these two ends here together. And then I'm simply going to sew them together, going through both layers. This yarn is so delightfully fuzzy that it really makes it easy to hide that yarn, uh, the thread. There we go. Like I say, I'm just not used to saying thread. You can see that just disappeared right in there. I had put a knot in the end, sort of a doubled thread here. And you can just sew these two ends together. Um, there are some knotted techniques that some people like to use to join yarn ends together. I don't think I would recommend that for this yarn just because it is so bulky. That's going to make a really big knot. But here I've just taken a few stitches. That's it. And I could, you know, tie that off. And uh, I wouldn't even necessarily have to weave in that end. Just put a good uh, couple of knots in there and then trim it off. But you can see that really is quite strong. You just take a few stitches there, check it, make sure it's sewn nicely together. And then you can just treat that like it's all one big um, piece of yarn and just keep on going. So that is how I would attach a new uh, skein or a new ball of yarn. And also once I finished weaving in those ends, I would go ahead and sew that down. That's actually going to make it a lot um, more washable as well, because when you wash it, you know, the stitches can come out, but having that sewn down will make it a little bit more secure as well. If you do want to wash your finished blanket, let me pull up the um, yarn label here. It should have the care instructions somewhere. Oh, on the reverse side of the label, it says, let me pull that off. I was thought we could see it from the outside here. But this is a polyester yarn, so it is washable. There we are. Um, see if we can get that to focus a little bit. Wash in water at delicate setting. Um, tumble dry at low on delicate. So for this particular project with this yarn, I would say if you have a, um, it would need to be a large one, obviously, but something like a lingerie bag that you could put it in. That would help stabilize it a little bit if you wanted to machine wash it. Um, and then I would probably actually air dry it. I'd probably lay it out on my drying rack. I think you're going to have a little bit better results. You can, um, you know, treat it like you would a nice sweater, sort of pull it back into shape a little bit, you know, straighten it out, get yourself some nice corners and then let it air dry. I did see a question pop up about keeping the sides straight, um, not accidentally adding stitches or losing stitches, which is can create those wonky edges that you might get with your crochet projects. And that's another place where these are going to come in really handy. If you put a stitch marker or again, a safety pin or a scrap of yarn in that first stitch, every time you begin a new row, then when you come back the other direction, you're going to know exactly where to stop. So that is just another great, that's another great use for these to help you really keep those sides really nice and straight. So now let's talk last thing here in our last 10 minutes, I'm going to pull up some paper and pen. And then we can talk about how to adjust the size of your blanket. I've taught this before, so I've actually got one with the math already on here, which makes it a little bit easier. So what we were looking at today was a 36 inch blanket. To make that blanket that width, we used 16 stitches. So this is, I did some circling, but it's basically 36 over 16. Okay. 
Now let's say we wanted to make a blanket that was 60 inches wide. 60 over x. We need to solve for x. This is the math. So we have to cross, multiply, and divide. Not a math teacher, so bear with me here. Probably not using the exact right words, but we take the bottom number here, our 16, multiply it by 60, 16 by 60, and that's going to equal 960. Then we divide it by 36, and that gives us this answer. So 16 times 60, bottom, top, equals 960 divided by 36, right there. So it's kind of like uh, figuring out proportions, I think. Now, 960 divided by 36 doesn't give us a whole number. It gives, gives us 26.6. So then, as you, the crocheter, you get to make a choice. If it were me, I would plan on 27 stitches. But you could choose to go 26 and make it just a little bit narrower. So you might not get exactly 36 inches, but it's going to get you real close. And then, if you wanted to make 27 stitches, STS is the abbreviation for stitches, you would need to make 28 chains. And that's the abbreviation for chains. Because remember, we're always going to skip that first one because it's our little ladder that helps us build up. So let's take those numbers and do another example that's not already been drawn on. We know that it took us, that we got 36 inches out of 16 stitches. And I should say too, that is when I was using my hands, your numbers might be slightly different. You might want to make uh, what we call a swatch, would be a small sample, and then you could measure out and see how many stitches per inch or however big um, that sample is, and then you can figure out your own personal um, proportions here. This is what we call a, the, the gauge. This was the gauge that I had for this blanket. So that's going to equal, and let's say this time we wanted to make a 50 inch wide blanket. 50 inch. So we've always got our inches at the top and we need our stitches then at the bottom. And that's what we want to find out. How many stitches do we need to make a 50 inch blanket? So this is where I need your help because my phone, which has my calculator, is the camera that you're looking through right now. We're going to do the math together and then I'm going to need somebody to put the answer in the chat. We're going to cross multiply here 16 times 50. So if somebody could throw in the chat, what is 16 times 50? 800, thank you so much. So now we've got these two numbers. Now we need to divide 800 by 36. So what is 800 divided by 36, please? 22.22, okay, and that probably just keeps going, right? Okay, so 22 is our answer here. So we know it would take 22.222 probably uh, stitches to get a 50 inch wide blanket. And so that's where we make our choice. We probably want to go a little bit bigger, but maybe not. You can choose to do either 22 or 23 stitches, and that will get you real close to 50 inches. Again, it's a blanket, you know, and an extra, extra inch never goes awry. So I always say round up in that situation. So if you wanted to have 23 stitches, then you would start with 24, oops, chains. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, are there any other questions? We've got five minutes left. So any questions at all? Well, Caitlin has a question about the swatch she's been working on. She says, my blanket stitches look more braided than V-shaped. Where did I go wrong? Um, more braided than V-shaped? Well, let's think. If it's, if it's just, it's the chain, um, or the stitches, my best guess would be, and it's always, you know, kind of a guess because I'm not there with you, unfortunately. Uh, my best guess would be that the stitches are sort of twisting around on your hands as you're making them. A very, very typical um, issue to have um, when you are learning how to crochet with a hook or with your fingers. So my best recommendation, unfortunately, I've sewn this one now a little bit, but my best recommendation, um, let me pull some tail end out here, would be to make sure to um, go over your hand before you pull that loop through. And then as you're making those stitches, let me just go ahead and make a fake one here real quick. Try and make sure that when you've got that 
active loop, the loop that's on our hand, the one we're working with that's always right there, make sure that when you pull down on the end of the yarn that's attached to your skein back here, let me pull this up bigger so it's a little easier to see. When I pull down on that tail end, do you see how it's the, the side of the strand that's in front of my hand that's going back down into the stitch? It's not going back down back here. It's going back down in front of my hand. That's what you want. You want to keep that portion of the loop towards you or at the palm of your hand. And that will help keep those stitches from twisting around as well. Because it's very easy, especially when we put it down and pick it back up to pick it up and put our hand in the other way. And then that's when we can start getting <clears throat> some of that twisted effect. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice wants to be done too, I think. Um, so I did see a question about how um, to determine how much yarn you are going to need for your project. Now, again, that can be determined by personal gauge. So that may vary a little bit for you. When I made, I will tell you this, when I made the 36 inch by 36 inch blanket, it used four balls of yarn. I'm going to need a different piece of paper for this one. So 36 by 36, I needed four balls of yarn to make mine. Um, now, can someone tell me, sorry, yes, outsource my calculations again. What is 36 times 36? Go ahead and throw that in the chat as soon as you've got it. Um, one, two, nine, six, got it. Okay, so that's how many square inches. 36 times 36 inches. The blanket I made was 1,296 square inches. So that means if I divided that by four, I'm gonna need someone to do that for me, <laughs> sorry. One of these days I'll have to get an extra calculator over here. 324. So that means I can get 324 square inches per ball of yarn. So now we need to decide, okay, well, what size do we wanna make? Let's say, let's go back to our 50 inch guy here and say we wanna make a 50 inch by 50 inch blanket. And you don't have to go square. You can just keep going and make a rectangle. I'm just gonna do this right now because it's a little easier. Um, I think I can actually do this math. We'll say that is 2,500 square inches. So now we know that that's our goal and that's how many we get per ball. So we can say 2,500 divided by 324. And then if that's 7.7. .7, so that means we're going to need eight balls. Definitely have to round that part up for sure. So can't, can't decide. If you, if you decide to round down on the number of balls you buy, you're going to come up short on your length there. So then you just round that part up. So that would be the math for figuring out how many skeins that you would need. So when it's time to add your next skein, you can just sew that those ends together and that will genuinely be your easiest way with this particular yarn to keep going into the second skein or third or however many you end up using. Um, were there any other questions? Yes, um, going forward, oh, sorry, I just saw one pop up there. It's a uh, yes, going forward, you would just continue to work into the previous row. So for row three, you'd work into the tops of row two, Row four, you'd work into the top of row three, you know, just on and on and on. It's just that first, working back into that first chain is just a little bit different. After that, you're just crocheting right in the tops of those stitches. But I'm sorry, you were going to say. I was going to say, Tamara, there's so many questions. Let's see if we, we have one more minute. Can you yeah. use double crochet for this blanket? I'm sorry, can you say that one again? Could you use double crochet for to make this blanket? Um, you could. It's a little bit more complicated. I will do that here. We'll go out and I'll demonstrate one more stitch if I can find a place to put it here. I'm going to just, we're going to pretend that we'd worked our way all the way over to this particular stitch here, just so I have one to demonstrate in. And to do a double crochet, this is going to be a fancier stitch. We'll pretend I've got my active loop on my hand here. Before we put our fingers into that stitch, we'd have to yarn over then insert in that stitch, yarn over, pull up through the stitch so that now we have three loops on our hand. And then yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. 
It's not exactly right because I had to kind of fake it there, but you can get the idea. For those who do crochet and want to try um, different stitches with your hands, absolutely. You just go ahead and yarn over and go in there just as you normally would with a hook. It's just a little bulkier and you need to take a little bit more time with it, but you can use any of the stitches that you may already know. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and come back off that camera. And I just want to thank you all for joining me. Sorry, I went a little bit late today, but hopefully uh, you enjoyed the class and do check out the recording um, on the Michael's YouTube page that will, you know, you can speed it up, slow it down, pause it on your own time. So I will turn it back over to uh, Patricia to let us go. Yes, thanks everyone for joining us today. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. See you soon. All right. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>